Israel's inflation rate today is toward 400%. And still she fights to try to settle the West Bank. And keep your eye on that little country because she's the signpost. She's the hands on the clock. What's going to happen to her? Israel's problems as she speeds toward the battle of Armageddon is not going to be solved. They're going to get worse and worse. In the not too distant future, a man is going to arise. He will be a man such as the world has never seen. He will have the military prowess of Alexander the Great. He will have the strength of a Roman Caesar. This man will capture the attention and the, 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 the astonishment of the whole world. He will be called the Antichrist. Not by the world, but it's called that in the Bible. He's the beast, the son of perdition, the man of sin, Daniel's little horn. His aim will be the same as the Herods, the Hamans, the Hitlers, to take over the whole world. Somehow, some way, this brilliant, this genius, this demon-possessed individual will find a way for Israel to rebuild that temple. Because her entire worship centers into that temple area. And it's going to be rebuilt. How, I don't know. How, no one knows. But it's going to be rebuilt. And it's going to be rebuilt on that spot. And Israel is going to accept this man as the Messiah. The newspapers in Israel, the newspapers in the whole world will acclaim his greatness and Israel will think, this is he. This is the one. You will turn on CBS, NBC, ABC, CNN. You will turn on the great news networks in the United States and this man's picture will come flooding through the television screens for the nation to see. He will sign peace treaty after peace treaty. He will solve problem after problem and yet all the time getting ready for war such as the world has never known. And Israel will think he's ours. Jesus forecasted 2,000 years ago. He said, I come in my Father's name, and me you will not receive. But another will come in his name, and him you will receive. And then, he will throw off the cloak. He's ready. The mightiest war machine the world has ever known is oiled and ready to roll. The hundreds of billions of dollars spent on armaments is now ready. He's going to take the whole world, but there is a burning hatred in his heart. First of all, he will polish off this, this insect, this, this, this people that most of the world hates, Israel. And he will invade Israel, and for the first time since 48, 56 war, Yom Kippur war, and down the line, Israel never been defeated, never stopped. She will be defeated. What America will be doing in that hour, no one knows, but the world is heading toward it. That's the reason I spoke a moment ago, America, don't let go of Israel, because in that hour, Israel will be attacked and Israel will be defeated. By the tens of thousands, by the hundreds of thousands, they will flee, they will run, they will scream, they will hide. And the world will look on and most will applaud and the nations and the capitals will say we are rid of these for good. You know why the world hates the Jew? You know why the world hates the Christian? You know why this conflict between Christianity and communism? You know why all the geopolitical global conflict? You know why? 
Maybe the world doesn't know, but I know and you know. It's because of one man, and that man's name is Jesus. 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 Most of the world hates the United States of America, and the United States does not know why we are hated. I sat in a restaurant in Athens, Greece, and a girl got so angry at me because I spoke of the United States of America and her education had been provided by American tax dollars, our dollars, given to her, brought here, educated in the finest universities. But with clenched teeth, she cursed this nation and said, I hate America. Most of the world does. We don't know why. I know why. It's because on our coins are the words, in God we trust. That's it. That's it. The world hates the Jew because of that one man, Jesus Christ. The scepter shall not depart from Jacob until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. It's an ironical twist. It's an enigma, a riddle wrapped in a mystery. Israel hates Jesus and the world hates Israel because of Jesus. And America supports Israel because of the one Israel hates, Jesus. Mister, you can't get away from him. You can fill your veins with alcohol. You can run. You can blaspheme him and profane his name. But you can't get away from Jesus. Our only hope is Jesus. Our only hope is Jesus. Our only hope is Jesus Christ. Israel. Oh, stagger. And the Antichrist, with television cameras all over the world, recording the scene, the moment it takes place, he will stand in his supreme glory. The communist world will no doubt applaud. The world of Islam will no doubt scream its approval. The capitals of the world will shout their acclaim. His television cameras record the act when he marches into that temple. The temple built to worship God. And he will pollute it and curse God. You see, the nations of the world are by and large controlled by fallen angels and demon spirits. You hear me? That's a reason for the suffering. That's a reason for the hunger. That's a reason for the starvation. That's a reason for the war. That's a reason for the agony. That's a reason for the sickness, the pain. It's because the nations of the world are, are held in bondage by satanic darkness, religious darkness. Are you listening to me? Do you understand? God's about to bring it to an end. The day of nations vying for supremacy is about over. The days of the Herods, the Hamans, the Hitlers, the Castros are about over. You'd better strut your stuff now, Mr. Castro, because it's about ready to end. The world will watch a spectacle that most of the world will, will laugh in sardonic glee. Israel is running. And he would swallow them up. But God stops him. And his attention is diverted. Daniel eleven forty four says tidings out of the east and the north trouble him. And he goes to take care of those situations. And Israel filters back into Jerusalem, but wait a minute, we're coming to the final solution. 
Adolf Eichmann coined the word, the final solution. Himmler, the final solution. Goose-stepping Adolf Hitler, the final solution. Gas him to death. Buchenwald, Treblinka, Auschwitz. And now, the pit of hell marches its spirits rank upon rank to march with the man of sin. It's time to do what Egypt failed to do, what Assyria failed to do in Babylon and Medo-Persia and Greece and Rome, the final solution. Tens of millions of human beings. The ground shakes and rumbles as the mightiest tank armies the world ever knew. The skies blackened with airplanes. I stood at Megiddo the other day and looked at, at Israeli F, American made F 15 Eagles. Practice dogfights above Megiddo. The most powerful military machine in the skies, the Eagle. I watched the F-14 Tomcat as the contrails were left and the ground shook as the world's best fighter pilots pushed those American-made instruments of destruction to their limits. Megiddo. There's no one that knows if anyone will help Israel or not. Zechariah prophesied over 2,500 years ago. It seems from Zechariah's prophecies that in that hour, no nation will come to Israel's aid. It seems like all nations will come to aid and abet the Antichrist. The world's mightiest army. The scenes are riveted in every living room, in every home in the world that has a television set. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. I have seen F-4 phantoms screeching, breaking the sound barrier. At seven, eight hundred miles an hour, four and five feet above the Dead Sea. I have stood beside Israeli tanks with snouts pointing toward Syrian forces. The only touch of war I've ever known is where those people as we were allowed to go to the front lines in the last conflict they know how to fight they're geniuses the smarts that God gave Abraham is in their brains and the might of the world is coming against them but they can't take it it's like, it's like the whole land, Ezekiel says, the whole land of Israel is covered. Every mountain, every valley, hundreds of thousands, millions of troops of the Libyans will be there, the Germans will be there, the Russians will be there, uh, nation after nation, the Chinese were there, hoarding millions will be there at the, at the valley of Megiddo, at, at covering all the hills of Israel to completely annihilate Israel. The newspapers will scream it. The television cameras will record it. It'll come into your living rooms and they will announce it. Half of Jerusalem has fallen. It seems like the sky is blackened. It seems like that, that the whole world is erupting. The mightiest weapons known to man. Millions are dying. The blood runs in the street of Jerusalem. And once again, it's become the city of the damned. And 
the last conflict other than peace for Galilee, Israel was running out of shells. Egypt was pushing frantic phone calls to the United States. The president said, get those shells there immediately. And American C-5As built in Georgia, the biggest airplane in the world. Bell is pregnant with ammunition, set on the runways, gorged, engines running. And the commandant, when told to take those planes off, the only airplane that could fly nonstop with that load to Israel. He said, I'll not take it off until I get a command from the president. And Henry Kissinger said, if those airplanes aren't rolling in five minutes, you'll be a book private in two. And they rolled. They came that close. But no doubt the phones will scream and no doubt the cables will fly. And no doubt the conversations will beg for help. But there'll be no help. There'll be no help. The Antichrist is rolling, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, Daniel's little horn. It looks like this is it. He is going to exact the last drop of blood. Israel will die. Armageddon. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When David, ben, just before David Ben-Gurion died, he was asked, what is Israel's hope? David Ben-Gurion said, Israel's hope is the coming of the Messiah. Before Golda Meir died, Golda Meir was asked, what is Israel's hope? Golda Meir said, the coming of the Messiah. When Monoghan Begin resigned, he was asked, what is Israel's hope? He said, Israel's only hope is the coming of the Messiah. And in that hour, they are going to realize uh, the mighty monolith the United States cannot or will not help, whatever the case may be. They are on their own this time. Uh, their ingenuity has run out. Uh, their brilliance has run out. Uh, their back is to the wall. There's nowhere to go. And all of hell with 4,000 years of fury is rolling down and Satan is cranking up the engine to full speed. When that little people, two-thirds of them dead, Zechariah said two-thirds of them are dead and their blood is on the sand and their bodies are torn to pieces and it looks like the final solution. But for the first time, what's left is going to cry. And this time, instead of looking toward America, they're going to look toward heaven. It's coming, mister. It's coming, mister. They're going to cry for the Messiah to come. They're going to cry for the branch to come. They're going to cry for the vine to come. They're going to cry for the fourth man to come. They're going to cry for the lion of the tribe of Judah to come. For the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley and the bride and the morning star. They're going to cry for the one that has healing in his wings coming back as a man of war. And as it's fed into English and French and Japanese and Italian and Russian and every language on the face of the earth, that Axis forces are advancing on all fronts. Half of Jerusalem has fallen. There's no way out. On the valley of Megiddo, on the valley of Jehoshaphat, the valley of Jezreel, Announcers standing on the field of conflict in front of television cameras with a microphone in their hand just like I'm holding here tonight. All of a sudden is going to interrupt their commentary. People are going to stop what they're doing and look at the sets. They're going to turn up the volume 
Everything's going to get quiet in a thousand million homes all over this world. Announcers for CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, and networks all over the world are going to start saying something is happening. Something is happening, ladies and gentlemen. We can't quite tell what it is, but in the heavens, something is coming. Something is coming. What in the world is it? You can see it. The cameras are pointed up. People strain. They stand up on their feet. They look at the screens of TV sets. Uh, an announcer stands speechless, not knowing what it is. Uh, they say, ladies and gentlemen, it's so big, it cannot be an air armada. It's so large, it's filling the heavens. Uh, rank upon rank, uh, tier upon tier, cordon upon cordon, uh, army upon army. Look, wait a minute, the one that's in the lead, uh, I've never seen anybody lacking. Uh, the one that's in the lead, uh, I've never seen anybody lacking. Uh, the one that's in the lead he's shining as the brightness of the sun it seems like a million rays are bursting upon his brow he's coming and he's got the biggest army the world has ever known and every blood 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 washed child of god is going to be with him hallelujah glory 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 to god glory to god he's coming it's Daniel's, it's the Hebrew children's fourth man. It's Daniel's angel. It's Shiloh. It's the one that's coming with healing in his wing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I keep telling you people, we're not serving a tiny Tim Jesus. I keep telling you people he's not sick. I keep telling you people heaven's not on welfare. I keep telling you people it's not on Medicare. I keep telling you that Jesus is alive and well. I keep telling you he's not in that grave. His body hasn't gone back to the dust of the earth. But he went away and those angels said he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Glory to God. And you know who's going to be with him? David's going to be with him. David, the sweet singer of Israel, the one that wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul. He's going to be with him. Ezekiel's going to be with him. Ezekiel that said he's a wheel in the middle of the wheel, he's going to be with him. Glory. Abraham, the friend of God, is going to be with him. Isaac's going to be with him. Jacob is going to be with him. Joseph is going to be with him. The Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are going to be with him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Peter, Paul, Silas, James, John, Timothy are going to be with him. Every saint of God whose blood spilled upon the floors of Roman arenas are going to be with him. Because Rome, they are not dead. They are alive. And they're with Jesus getting ready to come back right now. Glory. Old John on the Isle of Patmos said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Some of you poor little old puny Christians that say, I don't believe the power of God works today like it used to. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. He's coming. Somewhere in that pack. Somewhere in that crowd. Somewhere in that glorious, glorious army. I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. They're going to be there. They're going to be there. With white robes, riding white horses, coming back, coming back, coming back. For Jesus said, not the demons, not the devils, not hell, but the meek shall inherit the earth. Poor, pitiful, pathetic. Jimmy Swaggart. <laughs> you believe that preacher? Man, that's out of Star Wars. <laughs> Mister, that's the reason Star Wars don't interest me. We've got something a whole lot better. 
better than Star Wars. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. A whole lot better than Star Wars. A, a whole lot better than Galactica. A whole lot better than science fiction. I'm so happy that I might get emotional. Some of you running around acting like you don't know how it's going to come out. Some of you acting like you don't know what's going to happen. Well, I've taken the time. I've read the last page in the book. We win. What a thought. Jesus, full salvation brought victory. Yes, victory. Let the powers of hell assail. Heaven's grace can never fail. It's victory. Yes, victory. Everybody that's been bought and washed with the blood is going to be in that number. Angels. Angels are going to start throwing thunderbolts now. Yeah, now listen to the old clock. Stay there. Don't move. <laughs> only it took only one angel to stop 185,000 Syrians. Only one, and he probably didn't work overtime. <laughs> Glory. And the Bible said. Blood's going to flow to the horse's bridles. He's going to do it right, friend. Antichrist is going to be killed. <laughs> Gabriel's going to say to Michael, probably. Is <laughs> he going yonder? Get him. Who is it? It's that one I've had more trouble with than I've had with anybody else. His name is Lucifer, Satan, the evil one. Get him, Michael. Get him, Gabriel. <laughs> Glory to God. Lay a chain upon him and bind him up because we're going to get rid of him once and for all. Glory to the Lamb. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, I'm happy. Yes, I'm thrilled because there is hope for this world. There is a future, and that future is in Jesus Christ. He's coming back to take possession of this planet called Earth. It's His. He's got a title deed to it. It belongs to Him. Glory to his name. He's not coming back to have his hair and beard pulled out and his spikes put in his hands and a lictor's lash across his back. A spit up on, cursed, ostracized, caricatured, lampooned, and lambasted. But he's coming back, crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's going to touch down on old Olivet. Mormons are building a church on top of Mount Olivet. It's going to be busted all to pieces. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 He's coming to take charge. He's coming to take charge. He's coming to take charge. He's going to have on his general's uniform. He's going to have a sword in his hand. He's going to have on the power of war. CBS, NBC, ABC, I hope some of you are listening so you can get in practice. And he's going to set his feet on all of it, and it's going to split. And then Israel. It's been a long road, Israel. It's been a long road. It's been a lot of blood, a lot of toil, a lot of tears. But 
One shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And the land shall mourn every family apart because they will know he was the one. In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. And the Jews will be saved as in a day, and they will probably sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And there will be a new kingdom set up, and there will be no more crying in the ghettos, and there will be no more bloated, swollen stomachs, and there will be no more little kids that will starve to death. And we'll lay down our sword and sheep down by the riverside. And we'll study war no more. And the lion will lay down by the lamb and the beast of the wild will be led by a little child. Hallelujah. 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 Bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, open the door wide tonight. Open it wide. There is a fountain opened in the house of David. Help them to come in. Lord, here in America, give us revival. Don't let us lose our way. We are a needy people. We have strayed and drifted from Thee. Bring us home. Bring us home. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. I have tried in my limited way to give you a short picture of the coming future according to the Word of God. Great days are ahead for those that know their God. And I want to tell you, friend, the other side of that coin, storm clouds are billowing black on the horizon, thunderbolts of judgment appealing across the heavens. God saying to the nations of the world, I'm about to take charge, boys. There's not a lot of time left. You'd better hurry. You'd better come in, but I believe millions are coming in. I believe they're going to come in from every nation, tongue, tribe, and people. I believe the old and the young, the rich, the poor, the great, the small, the brown, the black, the white, the yellow, the red, they're coming in. I believe it. I believe millions behind iron curtain walls are coming to Jesus. I believe that millions of my precious Catholic brothers and sisters are coming to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because I believe he's told me they are. How many in this room, thousands of people here, you would lift a hand, Jimmy Swaggart. In my heart, I know things are winding up. I sense it. Doesn't take a genius to figure it out. And I want to be on the winning team. And I'm going to go for the gold. 
How many in this building, you're not saved? Let me tell you, you'd better get up with Jesus. You'd better quit delaying and you'd better quit slamming the door in his face. Time is running out. This is it. How many on this main floor will lift a hand? Jimmy Swaggart, I'm not living right. I'm going wrong. I know what you're saying is true. I believe it. I don't understand it all, but I believe it and I need God and I need prayer. How many will lift that hand quickly? There's a hand, there's a hand, there's a hand, there's another, 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 all across the main floor, young and old alike, raise them. On my right hand side in the bleachers, how many will raise your hands? I need Jesus. Raise it high. Pray for me, Jimmy Swaggart. I'm not living right. Pray for me. I need prayer. How many more? Come on now. All the way around. Thank you. Keep raising them. Keep raising them. Way in the back. Way in the back. Top to the bottom. Raise them, please. I need prayer. I'm not going to take a chance on a tomorrow that may never come. Hold up those hands, please. Left hand side. Slip it up. Slip it up. Thank you so much. I see them. Thank you. Thank you. I want everyone standing, please. I need every Christian praying. There are some of you people in this place that know how to touch God. I need your faith. I need your intercession. I need for you to believe God with me tonight. Just a moment, I want us to pray that mighty conviction will sweep this audience. Mighty Holy Ghost conviction will sweep all over this place. Join hands with that neighbor beside you and believe with me for a moment, will you? God, I'm asking that mighty convicting power of the Holy Spirit will sweep into every heart as only you can do. Oh God, that you will impress upon that man, woman, boy, and girl that God's their only hope. Jesus is their only answer. That mighty convicting power of the Spirit will touch that husband, that wife, that son, that daughter, that brother, that sister. Now, I want everyone that raised your hand and said, I need God. Listen, neighbor, time's running out. We're on the last page of the book. You hear me? The last page of the book. It's almost over. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. You're not looking at a paid preacher. I know what I'm talking about. I want you to come. I want you to run if you have to. Because a storm's coming. A storm is coming. A storm is coming. And I want you to hurry. I want you to come to the cross, to Jesus, as they sing it. Everyone had raised their hands. Come on right now. There's room, room at the cross. Room at the cross. That's it. Step on out right this moment, please. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Hurry. Storm yes, is coming. Jesus is calling. He loves you so much. Come from the top. The signs, the preachers come from the bottom, the front, the back. Come. There's room at the cross for you. Yes, there's room at the cross. I want you to look at Brother Swaggart, please, for a moment. You watching by television, please listen attentively. This is the moment that you've been waiting for for a long, long time. Jesus is going to change your life. What I've told you tonight is just a tiny, tiny bit of what really is going to happen. Man's only hope is to get into the ark of safety, is to catch a hold of the hand of Jesus.
spiritually speaking. Now God loves you. To the devil you're nothing. He wants to destroy you, but to God you're special. He wants to write your name down in the Lamb's book of life, to give you eternal life. How do I get it? How do I get it? You get it by accepting Him. Nothing you can do. If you walked up here and gave me a million dollars, it wouldn't add that to your getting saved. Now, do you understand that? If you walked out of here saying, I'll dedicate my life to building schools, for you, Brother Swaggart, all over the world to help these hungry kids. That'll be great, but it would not add that to your salvation. You understand now? Well, what do I do? Only one thing. Accept Him. Accept Him. Well, what do I do after I accept him? Only one thing you can do is just say, thank you. That's it. Thank you. You furnish the sinner. He furnishes the Savior. You see, he died for you. He shed his blood. He signed the note. <laughs> Glory. All you got to do is pick it up, walk up to the bank of life, and lay it down, and every debt will be paid. Paid in full. Some, maybe some of you here, I know some of you, but television said, Jimmy Swaggart, you don't know how I've lived. You don't know the things I've done. I know, but God does. But you see, he's not going to try to patch you up. Wouldn't help much. He's going to make you anew. He called it born again. The old person won't live there anymore. You're going to change. Now let us pray. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. It's, I have a lot of people write me and say, Brother Swaggart, send me a copy of that prayer. It wouldn't help you if I did. Because you don't get saved praying this prayer. You get saved accepting him. But I do this to help you to understand and to be led to it. And if you'll believe it, the moment you're through, you'll be saved. Now, would you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? And let's pray. Dear God in heaven, Dear God in heaven I'm a lost sinner. I'm a lost sinner. I, need help. I need help. I cannot save myself. I, cannot save myself. I, need, you. I need you. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And with your shed blood, Cleanse me of every stain of sin. Wash me of all iniquity. According to your holy word. Romans chapter 10. With my mouth, I confess Jesus Christ. In my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and he's alive and the same power that raised him will change me I accept Jesus Christ the King of Glory as my Savior right now every sin is gone I'm washed clean I'm sanctified justified washed Right now, right now, I am saved. I am saved. Glory, Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise.